Hey, it's Katrina. I'm excited to share with you a little bit more about lead pilots and how we can leverage it for lead gen. Uh, the first thing to know is that lead pilots integrates directly with LinkedIn sales navigator. So I have on my screen, I'm just logged in as me on LinkedIn sales navigator. And what we can start with is start refining a target audience. So for this one, um, we have Colorado, maybe we want to add Kubernetes. Let's see, I like to see um, up at the top how many people um, are getting pulled into the search. So hold on one second. Okay, so if we have Colorado and we have Kubernetes, we have 1500 people. Um, this is good just for the sake of the demo. Generally speaking, we're trying to refine that to about a thousand. And part of the reason is that we want to be as targeted as possible. The other part is um, we don't want to trigger anything in LinkedIn that would start indicating we're spamming people. So we like to keep it as a smaller audience. Um, 1500 is just a little bit too large, but we could do something in this keyword, like adding the Boolean search for not and then um, not AWS. And then let's see what that gives us. Okay, so we're at, we're at about 700, so this is good. There's other things that we can certainly refine as we get into this. We can look at company headcount, industry, job title, um, relationship. So this might be interesting as we get going on the campaigns, but we could uh, target this campaign specifically for second or third degree connections. Later on, once we've built this up, we may want to um, target only first degree connections. So that's where we are with that. But we can go through and we don't have to go through every one, but we can kind of look at the profiles and see, okay, Jake and Stuart, let's say, yes, those are definitely our right people you know, maybe Pete not, yes to Matthew, that sort of thing, until we get really refined and we all feel good about exactly who we're targeting. Um, part of the reason I like this compared to most social or digital advertising is that most social or digital advertising gives you the basic demographics, um, but it doesn't really let you see who, right? And I think seeing a person's um, exact job title, exact company name, geographic location, years they've been at the company, things like that really help paint the picture as to whether we're getting the exact right people or not. So once we're happy with the targeting parameters, we then copy that URL and then take it over here to Lead Pilots. Lead Pilots is our platform um, that we built because I think as business owners and people in the B2B space, I think we all pretty much agree that um, LinkedIn is really good for business, but we all also agree it's nearly impossible to scale. So even if we take a team member, like one of our sales team members or the owner of the company and block out you know, two hours every Monday to go through and make some connections, what starts to happen is, okay, we do the connections on Monday and then five days go by and we haven't logged into LinkedIn to do any of the um, accepting or the replies, things like that. It's really easy to get bogged down in LinkedIn. And then if we do happen to stay on top of that piece, um, we never follow up, right? Like how many people have you connected with that you haven't talked to in a good six months? Um, Lead Pilots helps with that piece. So if we go, let me make my video smaller here. If we want to start a new campaign, we go to campaigns and our team would be doing this for you, but I just wanted to show you kind of the features and benefits of what we're looking at here. Um, but we will go to create new campaign. We then do test. We paste in the URL for the people we want to target. And then we can do some interesting things with the times that go out, um, that the messages go out. Because like some of our clients have their, their time set to just the morning. So in their messaging, they're able to say, hi, good morning, type of thing, which helps to make these messages really personalized. So we can do some of that. Um, the big benefits here, though, are the profile invites and the sequencing, which is what I'm recommending we focus on. And the profile invites are essentially 
us reaching out from your profile to connect with someone in that target audience. So someone we just identified um, that was in that URL over on Sales Navigator, we want to connect with them. Um, that's step one. Now making sure that that message is really personalized um, is most definitely going to impact how many uh, connection accepts we end up getting. Um, after they accept the connection, we then do the sequencing. I think the easiest way to describe the sequencing is kind of to look at it like a CRM. So we're building out a drip campaign, but rather than through email, we're doing that over on LinkedIn. So what we can do is we'll write the messaging um, and you'll have some standard outreach messaging. In all of our messaging, we include some sort of calendar link, um, whether it be through HubSpot or Calendly. And essentially, that allows the person to schedule directly on your calendar, which saves everyone a step and quite honestly, a lot of time. So we have the first message in there. Let's say three days later, we want them to get the second message. Um, again, like keeping these really short, personalized is best. Like this one is good morning, first name, circling back in case my last email got lost in the, in the shuffle, would automating lead gen with tech be helpful to your team? Um, and then a a, a quick link to make it easy to reply. And then we can do a third step. Let's say we want this one five days later, and then we put our outreach message three in there. And then we create the campaign. Once the campaign's created, we then have this great dashboard where there's a couple of key metrics that we're looking at. Um, we get to see the number of invitations that went out. So how many people did we ask to connect with us versus how many accepted the invitation? So in this campaign, we sent about 400 invitations and we got almost 300 back as accepted. So that's about a 75% acceptance rate, which is awesome. And, you know, going back to the point of saving time and not having to sit at a desk to do this, I mean, imagine how much time it would take to send out 400 invitations. Like we'd be here for a while. <laughs> um, then the next piece is the sequence messaging. So this is once they accept the message, this is the sequence of messaging that they get. Um, in this campaign, we sent about a thousand messages and we got 90 replies back. So about a 10% rate. When you compare that 10% reply rate to like a cold email campaign, there's cold email campaigns that don't even deliver a 1% reply rate. So already we are in much better shape with that. The other piece from an analytics standpoint that I really like and I think is beneficial um, to kind of look at is if we take one of these campaigns, we can click into it and see the exact names and companies of the people who are in the campaign. So for example, this campaign is targeting Buzz, Mark, Tim, Brad, John, Bill, Jay, et cetera. Um, but not only do we see their names, we see their title, company, website, industry, relationship. And then the cool part is these icons all represent what we've done with them. So the eyeball is the profile has been viewed. The the little people person with the plus sign is we've invited them to connect. Um, this person happened to be in mail. We don't use in mail a lot, um, but sometimes that's our way in to getting the message there. But these envelopes actually show us the number of sequence messages that have gone out. So like this person has received step one, step two, and step three. Whereas this person has received step one, which is green, and then they have um, step two and step three pending, so it's still black and white. Um, this is also exportable. It just goes into a CSV file, but I think that's really helpful, and it's also helpful to cross-reference to make sure that the meetings that are coming in, um, you know, to see where they are in the campaign and what, you know, what did it take to get them to the meeting standpoint. So if we go back to the dashboard, the only piece of information that I think is um, also relevant here that's missing is the number of meetings booked. And part of that is because the meetings booked are usually booked through either a HubSpot calendar link or they're booked through a Calendly link. So that information goes into a different platform essentially. So we can still get that data, it's just not um, in a nice easy spot on the dashboard. 
But a couple other benefits to look at is like if we think of our marketing funnel, right? At the very top of the funnel is awareness. These are the people who they're in your target audience and they know you exist. Whether they have a need or not, we haven't necessarily identified, but they know of the company, they're aware of clinics, maybe they have a relationship with someone. These people that accept the invite, so that these 300, these are people who are now connected with you. So they're seeing content that's being posted on LinkedIn over time, whether that be um, events, new service offerings, case studies, testimonials, you know, things like that. So with brands that have longer buy-in cycles, this is really important because they're going to see content six months from now. They're going to see content two years from now. Um, and essentially that helps with top of mind as they are, you know, deciding what projects they're moving forward with in the future. So that's another benefit. So we have the scalability piece. It just saves the team a bunch of time. Two, we get these um, new people over, over looking at our profile and seeing the content that's going up. And then three, the sequence piece and the replies really help with the warm conversations. So these people who have replied, they have in some way raised their hand to say, even if they didn't book a meeting, they've somehow raised their hand to say, I'm interested. So maybe they said, hey, now's not the right time, but check back with me in Q4. Or I don't know if this is exactly the right fit. I don't have something in mind, but um, can you send me a case study or some info on a similar uh, project that you'd be working on to mine, to mine or um, case study testimonial, something in that regard. So they're, they're warmer. Um, and that's like, I think those are the big, the big three. So the scalability, the lifetime value, and then the warm conversations. Oh, and then of course the fourth one would be meetings booked directly on your calendar. So when we're running these campaigns, we work 100% in the B2B space and we skew probably 70 to 80% tech companies. We see about three to five meetings booked per week on any one of our clients' calendars. The thing that directly impacts how well um, that number increases is the messaging. So we just kicked off with a client who um, they're offering lunch at their office for people in their target audience that want to have a meeting with them. Part of it is an exploratory conversation. The other part is a cultural piece. They have a professional, a professional um, chef on staff so they can cook these fresh organic meals for the person and you know as a discovery piece it's a great way to start identifying how our client company can help the prospective um, company as well so thinking kind of innovative and outside of the box beyond hey schedule a sales call with me is going to be how we make sure we increase um, the number of meetings booked thank you